New York Times investigative report that goes deep inside the origins of the Trump Russia probe. You don't see details like this every day. The Times learning about an informant feeding the FBI red hot material on Trump advisors' ongoing contacts with Russia and what was in top FBI officials' minds when they began this super secret probe. Here's a clue from none other than Mick Jagger. I was drowned. I was washed up and left for dead. I fell down to my feet and I saw they bled. Yeah, yeah, I was crowned with a spike right through my head. If you know those plaintive lines, they are from the Rolling Stone classic, Jumping Jack Flash. And they are relevant tonight because that was the FBI's secret code name for the Russia probe, Crossfire Hurricane. It's from the first line of that ballad. So we know the agents in charge were at least feeling the stones and that they saw a hurricane about to hit the bureau from being right in the middle of the political crossfire. And Times reports this began in earnest about 100 days before the election. FBI agents going abroad to meet with a foreign diplomat, Alexander Downer, who was reporting evidence of a Trump advisor who got a secret heads up about, yes, the looming Russian meddling designed to hurt Hillary Clinton. And that aide, well, he's now pled guilty. It's George Papadopoulos, and he's cooperating with Mueller, which means Mueller's going to know what he knows. The Times also revealing in the new report tonight that the FBI was basically duping Trump advisors by sending a secret government informant to meet several times with Carter Page and Papadopoulos to find out if they were colluding with Russia. I'm joined by Ambassador Michael McFall and Malcolm Nance. Malcolm, what do you think of that tool, the FBI, and we only know a little bit, but more than we did before today started, using some kind of informant to glean real-time information from those individuals associated with Trump? Well, I think it speaks to the fact that they felt that they had a very, very serious situation going on. Uh, Papadopoulos, by speaking to uh, Downer, did tip off the FBI through you know, human intelligence all the way around from Australian intelligence to us that they were looking for these Russian emails and they were, that he was communicating with them to find them. But we know from other reporting that there were other sources of intelligence. And when intelligence that comes out of our community gets to the FBI, they have to task out agents and assets to turn that into evidence. And I think by the time they, you reach that 100-day point before the election, they were hot on the trail between Carter Page and Papadopoulos and probably the other indicators they were getting from the Steele dossier. Uh, they really needed to run this down to the ground. And that, that means they have to use agents in the field who are handling assets. Uh, Ambassador McFall, reading from this report about Carter Page, who folks have heard about, it's just unbelievable. Russian spies had already tried to recruit Page in 2013, and then he was dismissive when U.S. agents warned him about it. That warning they right. made even went back to Russian intel, leaving FBI agents suspecting Page had reported their efforts to Moscow. Now, I don't know uh, how you say double agent in Russian. Uh, but that wouldn't seem to be someone you want on the inside of a U.S. campaign seeking the presidency. Correct, Ari. Yeah, of course you wouldn't want that. It's my I, thing. I, just, I say obvious stuff on the news. <laughs> but, but it's good to say the obvious stuff every now and again because I think people forget just how extraordinary all of this is. Uh, that Carter Page was warned, as you said, and that's the way it works. Uh, you know, I, I've been in this world for decades. Uh, when that, they reach out, the, the FBI reaches out to let you know what they're doing because maybe you don't understand that world. For, but for him then to just dis dismiss it and move on uh, with these contacts, why anybody should have any context with any Russians uh, to talk about presidential elections is, is mysterious to me. But this is a very strange story uh, of which we learned uh, some of the details again today. Let me read Malcolm Nance from another key part of this report, because there's so much in here to digest. FBI agents considering and then rejected interviewing key Trump associates, which might have sped up the investigation, a good thing, but risked revealing the existence of the case. Uh, and, and when agents did take the bolder investigative steps, like interviewing the ambassador, of course, they were shouted in, shouted in secrecy. Uh, now, Malcolm, I'm sure you know the expression, real G's move in silence like lasagna. Maybe real G men also move in silence. But at what point was this too much concern about secrecy and not enough concern about catching a potential international conspiracy? 
Well, first off, the very fact that they wanted to move at that speed and that they had to be exceptionally careful tells you the level of intensity of the investigation itself. That, that indicates to me that this is one of the most serious investigations that has been done in modern history. But to do, Monday morning, when they, to do Monday morning quarterbacking, I know you're an intel guy, yeah. so you don't want to pass too much judgment on, on these tough calls. But were they too concerned about secrecy and not enough on doing things that might have caught this before November? Well, we are the ones who gave this the, you know, the, the catch this before November timeline. The FBI, the counterintelligence officers there, they don't work at that, at that pace. They work at the pace of where they can marry up that global intelligence to turn it into evidence to get us what they may believe is a foreign spy. And that's how this whole thing started, right? With American citizens in contact with foreign intelligence agencies. So to them, this is Aldrich Ames, right? The CIA mm. spy. This is them hunting down what they believe is the ultimate insight or threat. They would have to actually see information or already believe that the information they would have about Donald Trump, Paul Manafort, or whoever else could possibly be extrapolated from the involvement with Carter Page, that would take extraordinary measures. Right. They would take phenomenal measures to make sure that this case right. was the most solid case in the history of America. Uh, Ambassador, as a diplomat who's, who's talking about representing American values abroad, I have to ask you, of course, about the other development here in Senate Intel today. Uh, moving forward on Trump's pick to run the CIA, Gina Haspel, she famously destroyed the torture tapes. She got forward today on a 10 to 5 vote with two Democrats voting yes. That includes Senator Mark Warner, who many people have recognized as, as contra Trump on other issues. Uh, Ambassador, what do you think of that? Was this the right call? Does it concern you that someone so involved in the Bush torture era is getting a promotion? Well, it concerns me, but Ari, I just need to say one more thing on the earlier story, because remember, uh, uh, you know, I used to be the recipient of intelligence when I worked in the government, mm -hmm. and there is always this intention, even between Malcolm and I right now, about the folks that are running the case and us that want to use the information in real time to do policy mm -hmm. work. And I just want, want to remind your viewers, we could have found out about this counterintelligence investigation. We found out about another FBI investigation about Secretary Clinton. Mm -hmm. And the fact that we found out about one and not the other, that's inexcusable to me. Either you, you tell mm. us, uh, the American people, about both, because this is way more right. extraordinary what we're talking about than what happened with Clinton. No, I, I think you raise uh, an important point, and that's, it, and that's in the Times article as well. As for, as for the CIA, sir. I think it's a hard call because when you're in the government, how much authority do you have when your, your, your bosses are telling you to do one thing? I know when I served in the government, even as a U.S. ambassador, I did what the team wanted. And if you don't, then you what have if to the resign. Team, what if the team wants to destroy tapes that allegedly show torture? I would have resigned. Uh, I would have so never done that. So should she get promoted? Uh, that would not be my. That would not have been what I had uh, would recommend. I, I do not support this. I, and I wanted to just get in on that. And I know it's something that uh, both of you know a lot about. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me, or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.